Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Sean Kelly, and I am the Director of External Relations at the Asian Institute of Technology. Thank you for joining us today at this auspicious occasion, the inauguration of the Bongobondu Chair Professor at the Asian Institute of Technology and the inaugural Bondobondu Lecture. To begin our event, I am pleased to invite His Excellency Dr. Subin Pinkayan Chairman of the AIT Board of Trustees and former Foreign Minister of the Kingdom of Thailand to deliver, to deliver his welcome address. Your Excellency. Guests of honor, his Excellency, Mr. Adun Hussein Muhammad Ali, Member of Parliament, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh. 
His Excellency Mr. Nasu Hamid, Member of the Parliament, Minister of Power, Energy and Mineral Resources, Government of Bangladesh. Her Excellency Ms. Sada Manu Tasnim, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand, and Member of the AIT Board of Trustees, AIT President Dr. Wasak, Bangabandu Chair Professor Dr. Joyce Lee Roy, Member of International Media, your Excellencies and Honored Guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Asian Institute of Technology and members of the Institute's Board of Trustees, I would like to first of all extend a very warm welcome to our guest of honor, His Excellency uh, Mr. Abdul Hussain Muhammad Ali, Member of the Parliament and Minister of Foreign Affairs. And his Excellency, uh, Mr. Nasru Hamid, Member of the Parliament, Honorable State Minister, Ministry of Power, Energy and Mineral Resources, the Government of Bangladesh. And wish to convey our sincere thanks and appreciation for honoring us with their presence today. The government of Bangladesh has been a long-standing partner of AIT. Therefore, the establishment of the Bangabandhu Chair Professor, who will work on energy sector development of Bangladesh, with a focus on ensuring access of affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern technology. A key sustainable development goal is another testimony of this strong bond between AIT and the government of Bangladesh. Energy is a vital for the growth and the development of a country or a region, particularly in Asia. Asian countries are transition transitioning from underdeveloped to developing and from developing to developed countries. As a result, the energy demand is soaring year by year. Increasing demand for energy can result in serious global and regional environmental degradation and our effective efforts must be to pursue a path towards sustainable development and environment preservation. AIT trustee, uh, Her Excellency Ms. Sada Manu Tasnim, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand, and member of AIT Board of Trustees, must be commended for the very instrumental role she has played in bringing the fruition this initiative. Ambassador Tasnanim is one of the most active trustee members. And as a chair of the board appointing fundraising committee, has led by example in helping to establish this chair professor position. Our highest congratulations and warm welcome to, to Professor Joyce Roy, who has been appointed as the inaugurated Bangkabandu chair professor at AIT, and will be delivering today's inaugural Bangabandhu lecture. We are all looking forward to listening 
to Professor Roy's talks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subin. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Mr. Nasrul Hamid is the State Minister of the Ministry of Power, Energy, and Mineral Resources of the Government of Bangladesh and a Member of Parliament. Minister Hamid studied at the University of Dhaka and has undertaken a certificate program on leadership from the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University in the United States. As a State Minister, he has envisioned and expedited a plethora of organizational and technical innovations to advance overall power output, distribution, and efficiency across his country, as well as focusing on uplifting human resources development for the future and support through a string of developmental agencies and learning institutions. It is worth noting that the Honorable State Minister recently won the prestigious Visionary Leader of Change Award, which was awarded by the World Human Resources Congress in Mumbai, India in February 2018. At this time, it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage Minister Nasrul Hamid to deliver his speech. Minister. Assalamu alaikum. Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, His Excellency Muhammad Ali, Member of Parliament, Chairman of Trustee Board of AIT, His Excellency Dr. Subin Pinkayawan, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand, Saida Muna Tasnim, Member Secretary, Bangabundu Trust, Sheikh Hafizur Rahman, President of AIT, Professor Wasak Kanok, Bangabundu Chair, Professor Joyce Rai, Excellency Ambassadors and members of the Diplomatic Corps, AIT faculty members, my dear students of AIT, members of Bangladeshi community. <coughs> A very good morning. Shubha Shokal Dupuri Dike Chula Shyamrapai, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be here at AIT at this historic moment of the inaugural Bangamundu lecture. Nothing could be more gratifying for me to be part of the inauguration of the first ever Bangamundu chair, named after the greatest Bengali of all times, father of the nations, Bangam Bangladesh, Bangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, our visionary leader, Bangamundu's daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, again presented the nation's a glorifying moment of our decisions to endow the Bangamundu Chair doctoral level research fellowship at Thailand's premier technology institutions, the AIT. As the member of state, Minister of State for Power, Energy and Mineral Resources, I am humbled that the endowment is dedicated to advanced research on sustainable and integrated smart energy modeling for Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, today Bangladesh is considered to be one of the developing world's greatest success stories. The pace of progress and development in all major economic, social and human development indicators have gained added momentum since 2009. After present government took office under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, growing at over 7% annually the GDP, Bangladesh economy has seen its status change from lower income to a lower middle income. A host of large infrastructure undertakings, mega projects like the Padma Bridge, Rupu nuclear power plants, and Dhaka Metro Rail are transforming the country's communications, ports, and energy scenario. The country is going through a digital revolution as envisions by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina through Digital Bangladesh. Power energy is considered to be one of the main driven force in economic development. Under the dynamic leadership of our energy minister, 
His Excellency Sheikh Hasina, she is considered to be my minister of this uh, ministry. We have been working to transform the energy sector to a modern, dynamic, and sustainable one. Today, 80% of country's population has been brought under electricity coverage. While we march strongly towards fulfilling a target of energy for all by 2021, beside achieving unprecedented growth in total power generations from less than 4,000 megawatt in 2008 to a striking 16,000 megawatt in 2017. The government is actively pursuing the target of 15% renewable energy mix. Over 4.2 million households and 18 million people in Bangladesh receive essential service from standalone solar home systems, proudly the largest in the world. The government has launched a robust campaign, lucrative incentives and partnerships with global and local entities towards realizations of SDG 7, ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. In the context of climate change and contemporary realities of Bangladesh, is going through a transition for a fossil fuel dominated energy model to a sustainable energy model that integrates a smart energy mix with optimum energy efficiency and shift to regional energy grid and energy connectivity. I commend the advanced research topic of the Bangamundu chair to be most appropriate. I am particularly pleased to see a Ministry of Energy official selected by the National Committee as the PhD fellow delivering the Bangamundu chair research under the able supervisions of an internationally reported chair professor from the IPCC Nobel winning team, Dr. Joyce Sri Rai. I pledge on my own behalf and that of the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, our all out support to an innovative research under the Bangamundu chairs towards an optimum energy grid modeling solutions for a densely populated developing country like Bangladesh. I would like to thank AIT for receiving us today with honor and warm hospitality. I firmly believe that through this initiative, the relationship between Bangladesh and the IIT will enter into a new era. I convey my heartiest felicitations to all concerned from the IIT, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dhaka, and the Embassy of Bangladesh in Bangkok, who created a history by translating this challenging project from its concept to a reality and a successful launching on the eve of the 99th birthday of the father of the nation. I am very much looking forward to the formal inauguration of the Bangamundu chair by the foreign minister of Bangladesh and Thailand this evening. I would like to conclude my speech by saying that it could be the first ever Bangamundu chair in a foreign country, but surely not the last. We will see more such initiatives in the future. I thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangamundu. Thank you very much, Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor now to introduce our next speaker and special honored guest. His Excellency, Mr. Ab Abul Hassan Mahmoud Ali, Member of Parliament and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh. In his long distinguished diplomatic career, His Excellency served in various capacities at the Foreign Ministry headquarters in Dhaka and at Bangladesh missions abroad in New York, New Delhi, and Beijing. Prior to serving as foreign minister, Mr. Ali served as ambassador to Bhutan, Germany, and the United Kingdom. Foreign Minister Ali is well known internationally for his negotiation skills. At the headquarters, he negotiated and signed the Tin Bika Corridor Implementation Agreement with India in 1992. He also negotiated the Burmese Refugees Repatriation Agreement with Myanmar in 1992. Mr. Ali is a valiant freedom fighter and made enormous contribution on the diplomatic front during the War of Liberation of Bangladesh in 1971. 
He worked for Bangladesh's independence in the United States and at the United Nations. Immediately after arriving in New York in 1968, he mobilized the Bang Bengali community in the US. He joined the Bangladesh Liberation Movement in April 1971 and was appointed as the representative of the provisional government of Bangladesh at Muji Bagnar in the United States in 1971. Mr. Ali was appointed as Minister of for Disaster Management and Relief after the establishment of a separate ministry for the disaster management and relief in September 2012. Following the formation of the All Port Party Election Time Government in 2013, he was appointed as Minister for Foreign Affairs. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome to the AIT stage His Excellency Mr. Abdul Hassan Mahmoud Ali, Member of Parliament and Honorable Member, Minister of Foreign Affairs. My colleague, Honorable State Minister for Power, Energy and Mineral Resources, uh, His Excellency Mr. Nasrul Hamid, Member of Parliament, uh, distinguished Chairman of the Board of, of Asian Institute of Technology, uh, Professor Varsa Konok Nukulchai, uh, Your Excellency um, Ms. Saida Munatasnim, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Kingdom of Thailand, the distinguished Bangabandhu Chair, Professor Dr. Joyce Sri Rai, uh, who incidentally, his origin is in Bangladesh. So it's a special uh, uh, pleasure for me to uh, attend this function as the guest of honor. Uh, also, uh, I'm delighted to have uh, Mr. Sheikh Hafizur Rahman, who is member secretary of Bangabandhu Trust in Bangladesh. So only fitting that uh, he's also part of the uh, inaugural function. Uh, AIT faculty members, alumnus and dear students at AIT, members of Bangladesh community in Thailand. Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, sawadik uh, and good morning. I'm delighted to be here with you all this morning at the Asian Institute of Technology to inaugurate the first Bangabandhu lecture dedicated in honor of the father of the nation of Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, on the eve of his 99th birth anniversary in the glorious month of March. The month of March is, is glorious for us since it was in this month that Bangabandhu, the father of the nation, gave the historic 7th March speech in Dhaka at a mammoth gathering of about 2 million people. Bangabandhu said, quote, the struggle this time is the struggle for our emancipation. The struggle this time is a struggle for independence, joy Bangla, unquote. The 7th March speech inspired the Bengali nation to participate in the glorious liberation war leading to the independence of Bangladesh. In recognition of the historic speech given by the Bangabandhu, UNESCO has now, in October 2017, few months ago, included the 7th March speech of Bangabandhu in the memory of the World International Register. This register is a compendium of documents bearing immense significance and forms part of documentary heritage of the world at large. This speech thus will continue to inspire not only Bengalis all over the world and their succeeding generations, but also people suffering from deprivation and fighting for their rights and dignity. It is indeed an honor 
and privilege for me to be able to sign the citation for the esteemed Bangabandhu Chair Professor. As you are already aware, Bangabandhu Chair includes a doctoral chair professor and a PhD researcher endowed at the AIT. In this respect, I must commend the active guidance and encouragement received from the daughter of Bangabandhu, Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina. Thanks are also due to the government of Thailand and to the management of the AIT for making this possible. The placing of the citation and portrait of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, at the AIT symbolizes the strong bond of friendship and cooperation between the government of Bangladesh and the AIT. It would be an emblem of the enduring co cooperation between Bangladesh and Thailand. The inauguration of the Bangabandhu chair also marks a new horizon in Bangladesh's ever deepening ties with Thailand. Thailand is one of the first ASEAN countries to recognize Bangladesh after its independence. The two Bay of Bengal neighbors are looking forward to working more closely to take our trade, investment, economic, and technical cooperation to a greater height. I'm convinced that with the creation of the Bangabandhu Chair Professor at the AIT, will impact positively in realizing the goals of the SDG 7, Sustainable Development Goal 7, number 7, in affordable and clean energy. I look forward to formally inaugurating the Bangabandhu Chair at the AIT with uh, Foreign Minister, His Excellency Don Pramut Vinay, this evening at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Thailand by jointly unveiling a commemorative plaque. I'm happy that the distinguished chair and members of the AIT trustee board, president and faculty members of the AIT will all be witness to that ceremony. I'm happy to learn that the commemorative plaque will find its permanent place at the AIT. Indeed, Bangladesh's partnership with Asia's top postgraduate technical institute, AIT, is a long-standing one. Following our independence, engineering graduates from the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, BUET, have on an annual basis made their way to pursue their postgraduate studies at the AIT. Over the past few decades, more than 1,500 Bangladeshi AIT alumni have obtained their PhDs and master's degrees in this campus. At the same time, over 6,000 of our public servants have received short trainings in the priority areas of energy technology, energy management, and clean energy. Considering our long-standing relationship it is only appropriate that the first Bangabandhu Chair Professor endowed by the Government of Bangladesh is commissioned at the AIT and dedicated to a doctoral research on the contemporary topic of sustainable and integrated smart energy modeling for Bangladesh. It is doubly gratifying to learn that the endowed chair would be the first of its kind at the AIT. Ladies and gentlemen, our great leader, Bangabandhu, was a strong patron of science, technology, and sustainable development, and dreamt of a technologically empowered golden Bengal. A visionary ahead of his times, he thought of peaceful uses of nuclear energy in the early 70s before many others and founded independent Bangladesh's flagship science and technology institutions like the Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission, Bangladesh Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, and the first education commission under the leadership of an eminent scientist, Dr. Kudrate Khuda. 
Today, Bongondu's dreams and aspirations are being realized through the leadership role played by Bangabandhu's daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Under her guidance, Bangladesh is marching towards a middle-income country status. Prime Minister's vision in 2021 is perfectly integrated with the Sustainable Development Goals. Having broken all records, Bangladesh has registered a GDP growth rate of 7.2% for our 160 million people. Bangladesh has recently been elevated from low-income country to lower middle-income country as per World Bank's classification. In this auspicious month of March, as we celebrate our 47th Independence Day, Bangladesh is well on the way to graduate from LDC status later this month as a developing country. As we have met the three criteria, namely uh, gross national income per capita, human asset index, and economic vulnerability index, all our development plans have placed high priority on energy efficiency and clean energy. To realize the goals of Vision 2021, as uh, propounded by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, with 32.48% of our GDP coming from the industrial sector, power generation capacities had to be quadrupled from the level of 2008 to a record 16,000 megawatts with robust plans to achieve 24,000 megawatts by 2021. The objective of the goal seven of the Sustainable Development Goals is to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy to all. The priority, therefore, will be to give focus on renewable energy and smart grid modeling solutions. It is in consonance with the fulfillment of these aspirations that the government has chosen the contemporary topic of SDG 7 for Bangabundu Chair. Here, I would like to specially acknowledge the support provided by the Ministry of Energy of Bangladesh. The presence of our Honorable State Minister for Energy at the inauguration of the Bangabundu Chair is itself a clear manifestation of the strong commitment uh, of his ministry in ensuring success and sustainability of this initiative. I would like to pledge the wholehearted support of Bangladesh government towards ensuring the sustainability of the Bangabandhu chair. We'll work in close collaboration with the AIT and the chair professor in this regard so that we can conduct the whole process seamlessly and effortlessly. Before I conclude, let me convey my heartfelt thanks to the chairman of AIT Trustees Board, His Excellency Subin, the president of AIT, Professor Ursak, and their teams for hosting the Bangabandhu Chair at the AIT, allowing students and faculty from 45 countries to know more about Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the greatest Bengali of all times. I thank the Bangabandhu Chair Professor Selection and Technical Committees for recruiting an eminent academician like Professor Joyce Sri Rai, a member of the International Pan Panel on Climate Change, 2007 Nobel Peace Prize winning team. Bangladesh congratulates and welcomes Professor Joy Sri Rai as the inaugural Bangabandhu Chair Professor. Our best wishes also go to our doctoral researcher, Mr. Mahmoud Hassan. I also extend a very warm invitation to Professor Roy to uh, visit Bangladesh uh, at her earliest convenience. I would like to specially thank our ambassador in Thailand, uh, Her Excellency Saida Munath Asneem, 
uh, who has earned the reputation of being a very active ambassador from all around in Bangkok. Uh, herself also an AIT trustee board member for taking the initiative to maintain a permanent footprint of Bangabundu in Thailand through the unique idea of the Bangabundu chair. Let the Bangabundu chair at the AIT illuminate and benefit the lives of hundreds of millions in Bangladesh, Thailand, and beyond towards attaining SDG 7 and a Golden Bengal in Bangladesh. I thank you all. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabundu. May Bangladesh Thailand friendship grow from strength to strength. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Foreign Minister. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I, may I invite Her Excellency Saida Muna Tasnim, Ambassador of Bangladesh to the Kingdom of Thailand, permanent representative to UNSCAP and member of the AIT Board of Trustees, to introduce the video message by Mr. Eric Solheim, UN Environment Executive Director and Under Secretary General of the United Nations. Madam Ambassador. Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, His Excellency Abul Hassan Mahmud Ali MP, Mr. Nasrul Hamid MP, Honorable State Minister, Ministry of Power, Energy, and Mineral Resources of Bangladesh, His Excellency Dr. Subin Pian Khan, Chairman of Board of Trustees of AIT, President of AIT, Professor Worsak, members of the AIT Board of Trustees, Your Excellencies, members of the AIT community, dear students, ladies and gentlemen, and expatriate Bangladeshi community present here. It's a great honor for me. I'm also supposed to introduce the Bangabundu Chair Professor. I think uh, Professor Kelly forgot to mention that. So my principal responsibility today was to introduce the Bangabundu Chair Professor. But we're very pleased to inform everyone that on the occasion of the launching of the Bangabundu Chair Professor, the uh, uh, Executive Director of UNEP, UN Environmental Program, Mr. Eric Solheim, uh, has also issued a message. Uh, UNEP. Of course, the primary responsibility of UNEP is to protect the environment, and we know that in order to protect the environment, we must reduce emissions and create a sustainable energy regime. And hence, he was very pleased to know this, so I will request the AIT to play the message by the Executive Director of UNEP, Mr. Eric Solheim. I'm delighted to speak to you today at the launch of the Bangabandu Chair Professor at the Asian Institute of Technology. And thank you to the government of Bangladesh. Congratulations on supporting science and research on energy in the country. As the Secretary General of the United Nations has said, energy is the golden thread that connects all the sustainable development goals. We need to think about energy differently as the tool that lifts people out of poverty, but at the same time help, helps us tackle climate change. Bangladesh, fortunately, is well on track. Over the last decade, Bangladesh has installed more than five million solar home systems. Fantastic. Farida, person from Bangladesh, bought a solar panel to keep her tea stall open longer in the evenings. The children cannot study for longer. It's much easier to study if it's light at night. Like Farida, millions of people cannot continue with life after dark. The country has also saved billions in electricity consumption through using more energy efficient appliances. Investing in the science of energy is investing in a better planet. I really look forward to hearing more about the research and innovation that will help Bangladesh build an energy sector for the future, powered by renewable energy 
and greater efficiency. Before I introduce the Bangabundu Chair Professor, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh for coming all the way. He was in Singapore. He's come to Bangkok to inaugurate this chair. We are truly, truly honored. This is a historic event in the AIT because Bangladesh Foreign Minister has never come here. He's the first Bangladesh Foreign Minister to visit AIT. I'd like to express my gratitude to Honorable Energy Minister, State Minister for Energy, for being here to show the commitment he has towards Bangabundu and also to the research topic, which is sustainable energy. I would also like to mention that today we are honored to have the first cousin of Bangabundu, the father of the nation of Bangladesh, who's also the member secretary of the Bangabundu Trust, which is chaired by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Bangabundu daughter, is present amongst us. I'd request him honorably to stand up so everyone can see him. He's the first blood of Bangabundu, the first cousin. <laughs> Sheikh Hafizur Rahman. We are truly honored to have you, sir, within us. And we also have the chair of the National Committee on the Bangabundu Chair, which was established in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs by the Honorable Foreign Minister, Ambassador Mabu Zaman. He was our uh, High Commissioner in Singapore, and now he's the Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Without his support, this could not have been done. We also have a representative, a senior representative from the Prime Minister's Office of Bangladesh, Director Ms. Nilima, please. Uh, the Prime Minister has sent her representative to support us in this event. We also have officials from Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, so taking this opportunity, I just want to mention that uh, the Bangabundu Chair, um, today is 15th of March. We tried to do it on the 17th of March, which is the 99th anniversary, birth anniversary of Bangabundu. Unfortunately, that's a Saturday. And uh, on the 16th, the Thai Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister would be traveling to uh, Australia for the ASEAN Australia Summit. So we chose 15th of March sort of on the eve of the birthday of Bangabundu to launch the chair. And I think that it's a great achievement to do it right on the top of the 99th birthday of Bangabundu Sheikh Majur Rahman. Let us not forget that this chair is addressed towards fulfilling the dreams of Bangabundu for a golden Bengal. Um, I just want to mention uh, three exceptional facts about the Bangabundu chair. This is the first PhD doctoral level Bangabundu chair that Bangladesh government will be endowing to any foreign country. And number two is that this is the first uh, chair professor of the Asian Institute of Technology, and Bangladesh has the honor to endow that chair under the direct patronage of Sheikh Hasina, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. And then number three is that the research will be on sustainable energy by an IPCC 2007 um, award-winning uh, professor who's here. She's a professor of economics, but she prom promotes economics of the sustainable energy. So it's a great honor for me to introduce Professor Joyce Roy. Um, Professor Roy. Professor Roy was selected through an international competitive process. AIT has written something for me, so I'm finding it difficult to read. We had gone through an internationally um, competitive recruitment process. We had advertised at The Economist, and when we advertised, we had received about 15 candidates for this chair. And out of those, the top three candidates, uh, I, re I recall that uh, two were from, uh, one was from Canada, the other one was from Ch uh, China, Xinhua University, and Professor Roy, who's from Jadupur University. And uh, the final two choices were the Chinese and the uh, Indian candidate, but uh, the Indian candidate was very strong, and we simply could not, uh, you know, deny her the position for the Bangabundu chair. So I just reflected on the recruitment process, and now I go that the first chair professor uh, for Bangabundu um, chair. <coughs> professor Doitri Roy currently professor of economics at Jadupur University, Kolkata in India, has been selected as the inaugural Bangabundu chair professor. She is a national fellow at the Indian Council of Social Sciences Research and was a found, Ford Foundation postdoctoral fellow at Lawrence Barclay National Laboratory, Barclay, United States of America. She was visiting researcher at Energy and Policy Research Group, Cambridge University. She initiated 
um, and now coordinates the Global Change Program and Roichi Sasakawa Young Leaders Fellowship uh, fund project at Jadupur University, Kolkata. She was in the IPCC 2007 Nobel Peace Prize winning panel, has been a chapter author of Global Energy Assessment. In addition, Professor Roy was in the winning team of the Prince Sultan bin Aziz Award for Water. She was published, she has published more than 97 peer-reviewed journal articles, authored and edited books. Her research interests are in economics of climate change, modeling energy demand, economy-wide modeling exercises for, deri for deriving policy implications, water quality demand modeling, water pricing, sustainable development, natural resources accounting, valuing environmental services, and development and environmental issues relevant for informal sectors. Under the Bangabundu chair, the professor would look into research areas that will address sustainable energy and integrated energy policy in the context of Bangladesh with focus on regulation and market and incentive systems for improving demand side energy efficiency and wider deployment of renewable energy across the country. The chair, with support of other EIT faculty members, will conduct research and provide educational support on energy efficiency and alternate energy topics focusing on Bangladesh. So to have outputs that can be immediately relevant to the country and in the, can be applied in the energy sector policy making of Bangladesh. With these words, I, um, I would like to express the hope that Professor Joy Suroy will particularly focus on the fact that Bangladesh is a very densely populated country. Even it's difficult for us to have solar energy and solar plants because it requires a lot of. So we will look into look forward to uh, that day when Professor Joy Suroy uh, will be befittingly bringing out the results of the Bangladesh chair research. Um, what is important? From my side, as ambassador of Bangladesh, is that ambassadors come and go. I will leave Thailand one day, but the Bangabundu chair must live forever. And for the sustainability of the Bangabundu chair, I invite upon everyone to consider how to support the Bangabundu chair's resources, including Professor Roy, who's very well connected and well networked, to look for research funding for the next phase of the Bangabundu chair for the next four years. Um, uh, what is important is the private sector to get involved, and I know that AIT has a very strong connection with Bangladesh private sector, who does a lot of research here, uh, to seek funds from the private sector, civil society, and global philanthropies. So with these words, with the introduction of Professor Roy, I have the honor to call her to deliver the, the inaugural Bongo Bundes, uh, lecture at the AIT. Professor Roy. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my privilege. And uh, I really thank Bangladesh government and the selection committee for giving me this honor to do research and connect to the policy making. Because research in ivory tower doesn't make humanity's progress. So this, I think, is a challenge for me too. So I'm really happy in this occasion. And uh, I would, before I start talking about the sustainable energy, I would read out an uh, ode to Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And it has been written by my brother, who is a radio physicist, but is a poet as well. And it conveys the words of Bengalis from India, all of those who lived through the liberation movement of Bangladesh. Bongo praner dipti tumi bongo bhundhu he mujibur rahman she dipto shikhar dipo parashe chitto moder sada rahe dipo man. Banglar asha, banglar bhasha, nabomatrai rup pelo tomate. Bangladesher he pranupurus, aj e nibedon. More Tabupunno Sharoni. O Bangabundhu, the great Mujibur Rahman, 
you are the inextinguishable radiance of the soul of Bengal. Our mind always remain radiant with the splendor of thy divine radiance. You have given a new dimension to the hope and language of Bengali people. Oh, the life spirit of Bangladesh, my humble offering today is in thy holy remembrance. When I talk of sustainable energy, I try to put it in the paradigm of sustainable development. And for me, the sustainable development is an iterative process of development with long-term vision. It's like backcasting. We always talk of forecasting, but we need to talk of backcasting when we talk of sustainable development, to have a very long-term vision and work backwards so that we can bring it to the present day what we need to be doing to achieve the long-term goal. And in this process, what I, we might need is revisiting the need for transition as we progress and realize the mistakes and the possibilities and opportunities and new challenges. So in sustainable development, we do talk of efficiency, intertemporal efficiency, but what is more important is equity issue. And equity in the intertemporal sense, that means intergenerational equity as well, just not within the generation inequality what we experience today. When we are talking about sustainable development, we cannot forget the greatest challenge the humanity is facing right now, which is an unprecedented challenge of climate change. But given the research from all over the world, we find that if we look into the UNEP gap report and the IPCC's fifth assessment report, we can draw a line of mission decarbonization in the sense that we can say by what timeline, what kind of reduction in carbon is needed to achieve the negative carbon goal by the end of the turn of the century. And we need this, I'm showing this, which is compatible with two degrees Celsius rise, but in Paris we agreed to 1.5 degrees Celsius rise, which means even more expedited and accelerated action of decarbonizing the human economic activities. But we also know that almost 80% of greenhouse gases are from energy supply and the industry sector which are the two major pillars of humanity's progress ever since humanity started progressing and making lives better and better. So we know that in that same spirit of backcasting, looking into the future goal of humanity's progress and then doing the backcasting, how do we go step by step? So by 2030, the world has agreed to achieve the sustainable development goals, 17 sustainable development goals. But of these, the seventh goal is about energy. And this seventh goal has several targeted approaches towards energy efficiency, and then how do we provide affordable, reliable, modern energy for all, so that no one is left behind, and increase the renewable energy share or the clean energy share, we need to upgrade the technologies and we do need international cooperation. The international cooperation, the need for international cooperation becomes even more prominent when we look into the climate change issue as a global common issue. That means this is very interesting in the IPCC's 
special report on renewable energy, this says that, this is a very interesting fact because, which says that historically we have taken out the underground carbon and released only this much, and which is threatening the planet's survival. Still we have so much under the ground which we can actually take out and release it in the atmosphere. And if we follow the way we are developing now, then by 2100, we'll be releasing this much more. So the question the humanity is facing today is, we have to decide unanimously, globally, whether we bring out this carbon which is under the ground and release it in the atmosphere, or should think of an alternative way of energizing our economic activities so that the emission doesn't go up beyond the historical level. So this is a major question which everybody is grappling with and we are trying to find a solution. And again, as the fruits of development cannot leave anyone behind, in decision making also for managing our planet, no one can be left behind. We all need to be part of the solution. When we look at the, when we look at the solutions, then we find that in IPCC report, the fifth, fifth assessment report, what we could find is that this is important to understand that in the next, till the run of the century, each sector is going to add more and more to the emission if we are pursuing our development process as we are doing. So this is now understood how much more we will be emitting from each sector for electricity generation, transport, buildings, industry, non-CO2 emissions, and even for the land use sector, only the CO2 emission will be less. However, the question is, as we said, if we are going to be climate responsive, we cannot let this continue. So what are the alternatives? If we are looking into the 450 ppm goal, which is compatible with two degrees Celsius rise, then we know from the fifth assessment report of IPCC that it cannot be, we have, we have actually crossed that luxury of focusing on only one sector and trying to reduce emission. We have to have action which is running across all the sectors. That means economy-wide action needs to be taken simultaneously. It's a big challenge, but we have to accept this challenge for humanity's progress. And from that point of view, if we are thinking that there is going to be fossil fuel use, and then we have to think in terms of car carbon capture and storage. If we are thinking in terms of carbon capture and storage as a new technology, then the major actions will be in the electricity sector, the industry sector, the transport sector, and other sectors. Suppose the economic activities and the decision making and the technology progress doesn't allow so much of deployment of carbon capture and storage technology, then there is an alternative that the research shows the land use sector will become a major sector which will be actually stored in carbon instead of electricity generation and other sectors and then there will be less reduction in those sectors, but then more will be in the land use sectors. That means the land use will become, a major, will face a major challenge for storing carbon in the soil. So we have to make all these decisions that, and small, small decisions in each country will add up to the global total, and which shows up in the global numbers. So 
we know that to achieve all these, what is really important is that substantial reduction in emission would require large changes in investment patterns. And which are the sectors where investment is going to increase, and which are the sectors where investment is going to decline. The investment is seen to be increasing more than 100% in energy efficiency increase in the different sectors. And extraction of fossil fuel will see declining investment. And also fossil fuel based power plants without CCS need to see the declining investment. And power plants with carbon capture and storage need to see increasing investment. Similar increase in investment needs to be seen in nuclear, renewable, and um, the total electricity generation. So this is very important that this is something which is compatible with two degrees Celsius rise vision of climate friendly development. But we are still far away from these visions. So how to expedite our action, how to accelerate our action is going to be a major investment decision, a political decision to be compatible with the scientific findings. I'm just going to share with you some of the facts which I have been doing for Indian um, industries and Indian climate change related issues and energy efficiency so that we can find these empirical uh, solutions for other countries as well. So we were trying to answer the question that whether in India we are achieving the energy efficiency improvement. Very interestingly, this is, uh, I'm showing for Indian case study, but this is also true for many other countries, which shows that if you look back into 1973, decade of 1973, you could see that the blue line is showing that at what rate economic activity is growing. And the yellow line is showing at what rate the energy use has been increasing. Very interestingly, they are coupled together. That means the one unit of energy use is needed for one unit of GDP growth. But if you look into start seeing from mid 90s, then you can see that the decoupling of energy and economic activity growth has started, which simply means that if you look into the decade of 2000, there has been huge decoupling. Economic activity is growing at a very fast rate, which we heard in Bangladesh also, it is a 7% growth rate. So, but then you can see that energy increase, energy need increase has been declining, not declining, it is increasing, but is much decoupled from the activity growth. And this has happened absolutely because of the energy efficiency improvement or the decrease in the energy intensity growth. So this is one of the major challenge that which every country can actually do because the technologies are known and this is possible to do and has been done across different countries. And how this has been happening, because major industrial sectors like cement, steel, have changed their production technologies, production processes, they have transformed their production processes, though at incremental step, but today they are the cleanest and the best practice cement plants are in India. So this is something which is showing that this is possible to replicate in many countries and in many developing countries this is possible. And we had been trying to understand how this is happening, what has been driving this change. So very interestingly, all our studies show that what has driven this change is the industries had been responding to the cost competitiveness. The policy changes have influenced their action and the price consideration, you would remember that from 1973 onwards, actually the oil price has been rising. And that has led to a huge change. And also we can see that the exportability has made the Indian industries compete with in terms of the energy cost. So the second phase of challenge which is coming to the different economic sectors are that to 
accomplished the mission decarbonization, like the oil price really transformed the production processes, are there going to be a new era of carbon price which can accelerate the pace of change? And towards this, what we tried to do, we tried the global uh, GCAM model and tried to model Indian economy within that. And we tried to see that if there is a global carbon price, if we can achieve by the India's um, 2008 national climate action on climate change, then we can achieve this much of reduction. But if we have a global carbon price, then we can see that Indian economy will be responding even faster and the emission reduction will be even more. And the question is, what does it mean for the Indian economic activities? This means that a huge new policies need to come up to cover the industries which are not under the consideration for emission reduction because there are now new policy which encourages the trading among the industries for carbon emission and which has to be extended to different other industries. Whatever I'm saying is also true for many other countries which can be understood and can be seen how they can adjust to these. So our, our suggestion to the government is that we need to extend the energy intensive related industries policies now to the other industries which are not energy intensive industries but which does matter in terms of the total emission. And it doesn't only mean that the industry sector change in energy policy in the industry sector will affect the industry sector itself, but also it will affect the power sector because it will have immense impact on the power sector. What does it imply for Indian power sector? So we could find that it means that this is the current reference case scenario for India where 63% comes from coal and these are the other renewable is 13%. So this is how this is coming up. But if in 2050, we need to have decarbonized war, uh, Indian um, industry as well as the power sector. Then we need to have 33% of coal with CCS and nuclear 30%, renewable 24%. But this exercise we did before the renewable policy was announced by Prime Minister of India. And which means that they have said that this is going to be 44%. So which means that you can take out a chunk of this and add it to the renewables. So renewables are going to increase and nuclear share will be declining. But in this regard, not much is happening, but it has to happen at a very accelerated rate if we need to be compatible with the global decarbonization mission. So now just to show you a few numbers, which is my first exercise, I would say, when I was uh, given this responsibility, I started thinking that, so where lies uh, Bangladesh's position? So I was looking into that, and then I could see that Bangladesh, like India, will have to increase their energy and electricity consumption much more, even to catch up the world average, not to talk of the developed country. So there has to be more increase in these to in enhance the quality of life and to enhance the, I mean, to make accelerate the economic growth and make it faster. And only good news, which is really very important, is that we can see that the population growth rate in Bangladesh is even below India. This is a very positive sign in terms of the climate change. I'll come back to that. And also what is worrisome is the fossil fuel share. I could hear that the industry share, I, this was little older statistics, but I could hear that this is 32% from our, um, His Excellency's uh, speech. So this is something which simply means is that in South Asia, India and Bangladesh will have to grow much faster. And in that growth, we need to see how more international cooperation can build up in terms of, say, for example, sharing the regional grid. 
sharing the more hydro potential. And so all these things can make the region more sustainable. So it's just not the national sustainability, but also the region sustainability, which needs to be taken care of. And from this diagram, what I would like to show is that, this is also from IPCC, which says that if we look into the major drivers of carbon emission, then we can see that it's the economic population growth and the economic growth which are driving the emission. But as I already said, the population growth is declining in terms of Bangladesh's, which is even less than India, which is a good news. But also we know that the economic growth will be growing. So emission from Bangladesh will definitely be growing Compare and also from India, but what we can do is we can focus more on energy intensity or the efficiency decline, efficiency increase so that the energy intensity of GDP can go down. However, this is something which we tell everybody from IPCC report of fifth assessment that there has been recarbonization, there has been decarbonization in the globe over past two, three decades. But in the last decade, there has been recarbonization. And this is due to the China's very fast economic growth. So the real question comes, when South Asia grows in the next two decades, are we going to add to this, or are we going to take a different path of decarbonization? So this is an open question with which we all should be putting our heads together to find a scientific solution and also to help the policymaker to advance the policies. But we also understand that the fiscal policy plays a very important role. And in that case, it's not only of technology, not only of international cooperation, but also of managing the transition to greener economy is a major challenge. How do we make this transition from brown economy to green economy is a major challenge. We always say in the transition literature that the fiscal policy plays an important role, but we need to keep in mind there are all three possibilities which can happen. We can take a course of action where we can have demand side policy reform, we can have R&D investment, we can have technology adaptation, carbon trading facility, private investment and multilateral bilateral funding agencies, and can we can make this green economy fatter and fatter so that finally we achieve a fat green economy. But also, if we do not manage it properly, then what will happen is that we know that this green economy has to survive because it is now at the niche stage. To take this path, we need a huge transition in terms of policies. But it can also happen that the world will emerge with both brown and green economy growing side by side in next decades, but which is not desirable. And there is a possibility that we are becoming oblivious to the problem and then we are really not taking action. And in that case, the brown economy will again dominate and will eat up the green economy. But our goal is to make the green economy fatter. So which means that it's a management issue also. So how do we manage the low carbon niche formation is a management challenge as well. So we need to be careful about multidisciplinary approach to this problem. It's just not one discipline's problem which can be solved scientifically. With these words, I'll end here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Roy, and welcome to AIT. And now may I invite the President of the Asian Institute of Technology, Professor Warsak Kanok Nukulchai, to deliver a vote of thanks on behalf of our institute. Mr. President.
On behalf of the Asian Institute of Technology, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to the government of Bangladesh for endowing the very prestigious Chair Professorship at AIT, named after Bangladesh father, Bangkabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. The government of Bangladesh has been a long-standing partner of AIT and this initiative served as a further testimony to this. I would like to express my sincere thanks to our guest of honors, His Excellency Mr. Abu Hassan Mahmoud Ali, Member of Parliament, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and also His Excellency Mr. Nasru Hamid, Member of Parliament, Honorable State Minister, Ministry of Power, Energy, and Mineral Resources for honoring us with this uh, presence today and for the word of support to AIT in this important undertaking. AIT is in debt to, his, to Her Excellency Saida Muna Tasneem, Ambassador of Bangladesh to Thailand, and member of AIT Board of Trustees for her valuable advice and guidance throughout the process from conceptualization to recruitment of the Bangabandhu Chair Professor. Ambassador Tasneem played a most instrumental role in bringing to fruition this initiative, which is the first Chair Professor that has been established at AAT by a partner government. I would like to extend a warm welcome to Professor Joyce Roy, to AAT family, and thank her for the very inspiring talk we just heard. We are fully confident that with her very impressive academic and professional background, Professor Roy will do an outstanding job and live up to the aspirations of this prestigious chair professorship. I wish also to take this opportunity to commend Professor Kumar, our Vice President for Academic Affairs, who served as the chair of the technical committee of Bangabandhu Chair for the very thorough manner in which he has overseen the process and also thank all members of the selection and technical committees for their hard works and efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Before we move to the next portion of our program, may I now invite Dr. Subin, Chairman of AIT, to the stage to extend some tokens of our heartfelt appreciation to our distinguished guests, who I would request to uh, come forward on the stage to receive a token of our appreciation. Um, first, Foreign Minister Ali. Foreign Minister, may I request you to stay on stage for a group photo afterwards. Next, Minister Hamid. May I invite Ambassador Tasneem. And finally, Professor Roy.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may return to your seats. Foreign Minister, if you could stay on stage. The government of Bangladesh has gifted a four-year endowment for establishing the Bongobondu Chair Professorship at AIT. Named after Bangladesh's father of the nation, Bongobondu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. I would like now to invite our guest of honor, His Excellency, to sign the citation of the Bongobondu Chair Professor at AIT. How about a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are pleased to mark this new partnership by signing a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh and the Asian Institute of Technology to be witnessed by the guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Abdul, Hassan Mahmoud Ali, Foreign Minister of Bangladesh, and His Excellency Dr. Subin Pinkian, Chairman of the AIT Board of Trustees. May I invite both gentlemen to the stage, please. At this time, may I also invite to the stage Mr. Muhammad Mahbub Uz Zaman, Secretary for Asia Pacific, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, signing on behalf of the Government of Bangladesh. And may I also invite Professor Warsak Kanok Nukulchai to the stage, signing on behalf of the Asian Institute of Technology. How about a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Foreign Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great pleasure to inform you that the 7th March speech of Bongobondu has been translated into the Thai language. Now may I request Her Excellency Ambassador Said Muna Tasnim to conduct the unwrapping ceremony of the March 7th historic speech of Bongobondu. Madam Ambassador. Honorable Foreign Minister, Chairman of the AIT Trustee Board and President AIT and ladies and gentlemen, Bangladesh Embassy in Bangkok to the initiative to translate into Thai language 
the historic seven-month speech of the father of the nation, Bangamudi Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, which has been recognized by the UNESCO, as the Honorable Foreign Minister has mentioned earlier, as the documentary heritage of the memory of the world register. It's a speech which was delivered on the 7th of the March, completely extempore by the father of the nation, from his passion to free the Bengali nation from oppression and suppression. We are very honored that this speech was translated to Thai language by the director of the Asian Studies South Asia Center of the Chulalongkorn University, which is considered to be one of the top universities in Thailand. And he's a South Asian language expert. And when um, he translated that to uh, English, he actually knows Bangla. So he read the original speech. And he said that when he translated, when he read it from English to Thai, and he read it from Bengali to Thai, he thought the English translation was not passionate enough. <laughs> it could not capture the passion of the speech. So he was very pleased that he read the Bengali version and he translated that into Thai language. I have the single honor to request Honorable Foreign Minister of Bangladesh to unwrap this Thai translation of the 7 March speech. I would also like to request the first cousin of the Bonga Bondhu to come to the stage so we give him one set of the original print of the seven March speech in Bhasa Thai, the Thai language. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our program for today. On behalf of everyone gathered here in the auditorium to celebrate this historic new chapter in AIT Bangladesh partnership, I would like to thank you all for participating at our event today. Thank you and wishing you a pleasant afternoon. Thank you very much.